In today's video, I'll show you how to turn this frosty morning photo into this. I'm starting with the image opening Lightroom, and I can see two improvements immediately that I want to make. The first is that I think the foreground is a little bit too dark, so I want to open the shadows. The other is that I want to create a bright glowing light effect in the top left of the frame. Starting with the glow effect, I'll add a new radial gradient to select that part of the image. I'll be using this to produce the bright glowing light. After adding the selection, I can move it into position and resize it. I'm going to use a large feather on the gradient because that will help to blend the effect into the image. To add the glow, I first want to check how the image responds to increasing the highlights. This seems to produce too bright an area in the sky, so instead I'll reduce the brightness of the area slightly and use the black slider instead. By increasing the blacks and shadows sliders, it helps to reduce the contrast, giving the appearance of a softer light. I also want to give the light a softer misty feel, which I can do using the effect sliders. Here I'm going to use a negative dehaze, clarity and texture setting to produce this softness. I don't want to use too strong a setting here though, because I'm going to be magnifying it later using other adjustments. When editing landscape photos and nature scenes, it's usually best to build up the effect gradually. This can help to produce a more natural and believable look. Next, I'll use the Curves tool. It's one of my favourite tools and appears in a wide range of editing software. All I'm doing is moving the curve up and down in the highlights and then the shadows to see how the image responds. If an adjustment looks good, I'll leave it and just move on to the next point to adjust. I don't need to take any more control over the tones at this stage of the editing. The objective is to apply a rough set of adjustments to the image, which I can refine later as my editing progresses. Next, let's address the dark contrasty area in the foreground, starting with the controls in the basic panel. Here I'm working through the adjustments just to see how the image responds. Based on what I'm seeing, I think it's best to control the foreground using a selection. To create this, I'll duplicate and invert the radial selection I used in the sky. That's going to prevent my adjustments from interfering with that area. I can create the new selection by clicking the three dots next to the first selection. Then in the pop-up menu, I can select the option to duplicate and invert the mask. We now see the new mask with the selection in red. I'll use this to make the area brighter. Increasing the contrast and whites can add some sparkle to the image as it's looking a little flat in this area, but it can also make the dark areas darker. I could use the black slider to limit this, but I'm going to use the curves tool instead. Here I can brighten the highlights again, then in the shadows, I'm going to move the black point up. This ensures that the dark areas in the foreground are only a dark grey tone rather than a black. I'll then add a small amount of clarity to make the detail in the area pop a little bit more. Let's compare the adjustments so far with the starting image. I can see that the image now feels slightly brighter and has a soft light effect. I'm happy with that, but I want to check the colour temperature as a final touch. I can see that a cooler temperature improves the frost, giving the image more of a colder feel. But a warmer light also works well with the soft light in the sky. Rather than work on this now, I'll look at it again later in the editing. I've done all the work now that I want to do in Lightroom, so I'm going to open the image in Photoshop for the next set of adjustments. With the image open in Photoshop, I'll launch Knit Color Effects from the Knit Collection palette. Although I'm using the Knit Collection 7 for my editing, you'll find the same filters in earlier versions of the Knit Collection. They've been around for years, but they still produce superb results. When the image opens in Knit Color Effects, I'll begin by checking the presets. What I'm looking for here is one that produces a bright but soft light in the image. If I see a thumbnail I like, I'll apply it to the image to check the effect. Although the thumbnails are useful, 
judging the effect on the main image is much easier. Now the spring preset seems to produce the effect that's in line with how I want the finished image to look. Once I've applied the preset, I can then see the filters and settings used on the right of the interface. Rather than just accepting these though, I want to check what each one contributes to the effect. The foliage enhancer doesn't appear to do anything at all. All the effect seems to be coming from the sunlight filter. I'll therefore delete the foliage adjustment. Now I can refine the settings in the sunlight filter to amplify the effect that I like. This filter is ideal for brightening the sunlight and warming it slightly. When I'm happy with the result, I'll go to the filter list to add some of the filters. The first of these is the classic soft focus effect, which produces a glow in the highlights. The default settings are too strong, so I just need to change them. The method dropdown is the best place to start for this, because it affects the level of brightness the glow produces. For this image, I want to use option number three. This still produces a bright glow effect, but it doesn't cause the highlights to blow out like the others do. I can then adjust the other controls until I find an effect that looks good on the image. When I think I have that looking right, I'll add a dark and light and centre filter. I want to use this to brighten the sky, but make the foreground slightly darker without turning the dark areas black. I'll start by adding a centre point. This is the point that the filter will treat as being the centre when applying its effect. I can then adjust the centre and border luminosity sliders to achieve the result I want. When I think the image looks right, I'll click the option to convert the layer to a smart object and then apply my edits. Smart objects are a technology in Photoshop that will save my nick editing as part of the image. Then, if I want to make any adjustments in the future, I can reopen the filter to make the changes. To finish the image, I want to bring out the highlights in the foreground areas. I'll do this by creating a luminosity selection using the TK Actions plugin. I'll start by adding a dodge layer from the TK Actions plugin. Then I can select the highlights using the Multimask panel, which is also part of TK Actions. I can then load this as a selection. Now I can begin to paint on the dodge layer using white and a soft brush. This makes the frosty areas in the image look brighter where I paint. I can then refine the opacity of the layer to achieve the brightness I want overall. My next step is to enhance the warmth in the bright glowing light. I'll do this by adding a new empty layer and setting the blend mode to hard light. After that, I'll select the colour that I want to use by sampling the existing colours in the image. This keeps the general colour balance the same across the image, and it makes it look more natural. I find that it's better to start with a colour from the image, even though you might tweak it slightly. Now I can paint on the areas where I want to add warmth and brightness to the image. Remember, I'm still painting through the luminosity selection I created with TK Actions.
When I have the image looking about right, I'm going to clear the selection that I've been using. I'll then reduce the brush opacity and use it to paint a soft light effect onto the image with a large brush. I now want to add another empty layer and set the blend mode for that to hard light as well. I'm going to use this layer to paint a cooler colour into the highlights on the foreground. As before, I'll sample the colour to use from the image. I can then use the TK Actions plugin to select the area I want to adjust and load that as a new selection. I can then paint over the areas that have frost in the shadows on either side. As I paint, we can see the frost begins to have a colder blue feel to it. This also helps to draw the viewer's eye onto the branches in the foreground in the centre of the frame. I can then refine the opacity of the layer to create a good balanced effect. Here's the starting image again, and here's the finished image after my editing. Now earlier I mentioned that I use the Curves tool a lot, but I didn't explain how it works. To understand that, watch this video next. Thanks for watching today and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and please see my website for more tutorials. I'll see you soon for another video.